And here's how we're going to be able to keep you up to date all evening long as the results are coming in. Of course, focusing at the top of the ticket first. This is the presidential race and we'll be able to show you the real time results county by county. You're wondering what's the race like between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris in Erie County. We'll get those numbers coming in shortly after polls close up in Niagara County down across the southern tier. So you'll know what's happening where you live. Also we'll be able to do that down in Pennsylvania for our counties there. Also, we have a US Senate race that we're keeping track of Kirsten Gillibrand running for reelection. Not expected to be close, but we'll track the numbers. Also three congressional districts here in Western New York. The 23rd is across the southern tier part of Erie County as well. Nick Langworthy expected to easily win that race. 24th district Claudia Tenney expected also to win. We'll be able to go county by county in this very large district. And then the 26th is geographically smaller part of Erie and Niagara counties. This is Tim Kennedy's district. He is also expected to easily win reelection there. So those are some of the local races that we'll be following. But of course, in terms of the presidential race, what really matters is that electoral college, right? And here's where things stand right now, how we think it's going to play out with the seven swing states, those in white, the ones that will really decide this race. And what we can do is sort of assume for a moment that Kamala Harris wins Wisconsin and Michigan. That puts her at 251 to Donald Trump's 219. If she wins Pennsylvania, that's 270, right? That's probably race over. On the other hand, if Donald Trump wins Pennsylvania, takes these southern states, as many expect that he will, the so-called Sun Belt, that would put Donald Trump at 287. So we'll be tracking the electoral map as it fills in throughout the night. Expected to be a long night. We probably won't have a final result on election night on Tuesday, but obviously be able to keep track of all of that. And we want to talk more about that now with Scott Tranter, who joins us. He's director of data science for Decision Desk HQ. That is the company that's going to be providing us real time election results on election day. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So I want to start there with what I mentioned a moment ago and early voting. We've seen a huge uptick and it's this time around not just Democrats, which have embraced early voting more so in the past, but a lot of Republicans are doing early voting as well. How do you anticipate that is going to change the election day experience and how is it going to change the work for those of you, you know, tallying all of this up? Yeah, what I think we're going to see here is just a, a change in voting patterns. As you pointed out, there are more Republicans voting early, mostly by mail, um, in states like Nevada, Arizona, um, and even places like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. So I think that's going to change um, a little bit about how election night feels as polls close. And again, each state has different rules on when they're allowed to open those absentee ballots and how they report them. But um, I think you might see a little bit less of a, 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 a red mirage, as they called it in Pennsylvania, and you might see a little bit more of a uh, uh, an advantage for Republicans coming out of Nevada and Arizona than you saw in um, uh, 2020, but it's certainly going to change the voting and reporting patterns we're going to see in election night. Obviously, what matters most is the Electoral College, right? That map and those seven swing states. Which of the seven are you most paying attention to? And could any of them, um, maybe especially on the East Coast, since their polls close first, will any of them perhaps be a bellwether to you? Yeah, it's it's Pennsylvania. Whichever candidate wins Pennsylvania has an 85% chance of being the next president. And that's just because how these states go, they generally take other states with them. So, you know, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin generally, uh, you know, tend to vote the, the same way. And they're all toss up battleground states in, in our forecast. The other two states that um, we'll be looking at closely, especially in the East Coast, Georgia and North Carolina. Georgia, a state that Joe Biden won in 2020, just narrowly. It looks like Donald Trump's going to be able to flip that seat. Um, um, North Carolina reports its votes pretty quickly, um, and that looked to be a, a battleground state, but Donald Trump has been pulling away there um, for a little while. If Harris is able to pull off an upset in either of those two states, it really pretends to uh, several days before we, he's, we, we know the next president. But if Donald Trump wins both Georgia and North Carolina, um, you know, all eyes will be on Pennsylvania, the upper Midwest. Is, if that happens, it's potential to be um, a, a projectable race by early Wednesday morning. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you in terms of sort of all of us setting our expectations on when we're going to have a final answer. It took quite a while four years ago to know who won the White House. How do you see it playing this time around? And, you know, it's all about those those battleground states. Do you think there is much of a chance that the, even though the polls right now show all of them pretty much within the margin of error, I guess it could end up being a decisive victory for either candidate because polls have been off before, right? 
Yeah, I, I think you, you, you kind of contextualize it pretty well as the, the, the polls and the forecast show the, the race is close. Um, but it doesn't mean that either candidate, you know, will we'll get some momentum near the end. And, you know, we might see a, a candidate get over 300 electoral votes when this is when this is all over, just because these states tend not to split up evenly. They tend to go all one direction. Um, and uh, we just don't know what that direction is yet. That's what election night's for. Finally, Scott, you know, in the past, um, a lot of elections officials have tried to warn the public, don't pay too much attention to the early results. And I know you said that's changed a little bit now that it seems like there's a broad swath of people doing early voting, so we're not going to have the red mirage or, or what have you. But what are you sort of telling folks in terms of setting their expectations on what the early results will tell us, when we're going to have a winner, and how everybody should be processing these results as they come in a little bit here, a little bit here? A little bit here. I think what we're gonna what we're gonna see differently from 2020 is again the, the Republicans are kind of uh, re-embracing the early vote, and so some of these states that drop the early vote later in the night, um, uh, we're gonna see less of a Democratic shift um, in the vote counting. Some of the states that drop the early vote and the absentee vote earlier in the night, we're gonna, we're gonna see less of a, uh, of a of a blue wave early in the voting reporting. So all in all, I think it's a little bit less of a roller coaster of 2020. Um, but, you know, by and large, it, it's one of those things, you know, early voting is, is tough to look at. There's a reason why we call it tea leaves. I'm not sure that everyone should be reading them. Scott Tranter, Director of Data Science for Decision Desk HQ. It's great to have you on the show. We're excited to be partnering with DDHQ to get these results. You want them quickly, but you want them right. Uh, and you guys have a great track record. Thank you. Thank you.